Hi guys and welcome to another Blender tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to create this animated water droplet effect using only free resources and of course Blender. I recently found a great add-on to do this for free and I'm going to show you where to get it and how to use it. We're going to cover lighting, appending files, how to create a seamless background and render settings. And I'm not going to skip any steps, so even if you're a complete beginner, you should be able to follow along with no problems. Let's get started. Okay, so we're going to start in a fresh blender scene. Let's uh, just start off by clicking on the light and shift clicking the sphere, pressing X to delete and deleting those two objects. We'll leave the camera there for now. So next thing we're going to do is add a bottle in. So if you press N on your number pad and go to Blender Kit. Now if you don't have Blender Kit, let me just quickly recommend it. It's a fantastic add-on for Blender. It comes with tons and tons of free models, materials. I'd say it's an essential first you know, add-on to get for, for Blender. I'll put a link in the description below. We're going to search for a whiskey bottle. And in the search filters thing, we're just going to toggle down where it says free first. And we're just going to grab this bottle of Jack Daniels, drop it into the center of our scene. Okay, so you can see the bottle there if we zoom in a bit. Let's go into viewport mode. So what we're going to do, the object is made up of several different objects, but we're going to join the label and the bottle together by basically clicking the label first, holding down shift, clicking again, and then pressing control and J to join those two objects together. Now we're going to add the geometry nodes, uh, water droplets onto them. So first of all, you need to download the file. So this uh, is a free file, it's called Raindrop Simulator by this uh, person called Blender S. It's fantastic, they're giving it away. You can actually pay for it if you want to by putting a, a dollar amount, or you can just press zero to basically get it for free. It's a really nice little add-on for doing this condensation water droplets effect. So what we're going to do, um, we're gonna download the file, and then we're gonna append the parts of the file that we need. So if you go to File, Append, and then you go to your downloads where you downloaded this file, double click that, go to the collections, select both of those collections and click append. And you'll see now they've added that in. If you just press G to grab X to move it across, we're just gonna move it out of the way because we don't wanna see it for this part. So what we've got now is actually a geometry nodes, uh, basically like modifier that we can add to our objects. So if you click on the bottle, in fact, you can apply these modifiers if you want to, just to get them out of the way. And then add modifier, geometry nodes, and you'll see now we've got the Blender S rain droplet simulator. So the other thing we need to do is set a material for the water droplet. So if you just click in this window here and then click drop, press space bar to play the simulation, you'll see the water droplet start to appear on the bottle and drip down the bottle. So you can see in the geometry node section, we've also got some settings. You can change the amount of rain, the amount of condensation, the wind angle, the wind power. There's loads of things you can change. I'll let you have a fiddle around with this on your own. So basically we've kind of got our simulation working at this point. So all we need to do now is add some lights and a background and we can render it out. Set your camera position by getting a nice view in the viewport. I'm kind of looking something like this. Then press Control, Alt, and Zero on your number pad, and that sets the camera viewport to match your viewport. In the camera settings, let's change a few of these. So it will work in Eevee, but I'm gonna change it to Cycles. Device, set to GPU if you've got one. Uh, the viewport sampling, just set that to 32 for both render and viewport. And also under Denoise, make sure you've got Use GPU clicked if you can do that. If you scroll down to under the color management, you can set this look to medium high contrast, just to give us a bit more punch to the image. Secondly, if you go to your output properties, we're gonna change the resolution uh, from 1920 to 1920 to make it a square format. And then if you go to view menu and just go to navigation, walk navigation, you can actually move the camera view around with the mouse and then use W, A, S and D to move around backwards and forwards, left and right, like just like in a computer game, and the Q and E keys to move up and down. Now, if these are moving a bit too fast for you, I think they are, you can hold down the Alt key at the same time and they'll move basically a bit slower. So I'm just gonna basically move the camera view just so it centers this in the frame. 
So we're going to basically now add some lights to the scene. So I'm just going to press Shift and A to add an area light. What I'm going to do under the light setting, instead of being square, I'm going to change it to a rectangle. I'm just going to change the shape from 0.1 to 1 to make it a long, tall rectangle. And then we're going to add a constraint. I always forget where these are, constraints. Um, and basically we're going to track to, and we're going to set the object to be the whiskey bottle. Now you'll see, if I press G to move the light, doesn't matter where we put it now in the scene, it's going to point at the whiskey bottle, it saves a load of time. So I'm just going to press 7 on the number pad to go to top view, I'm going to press G to grab, I'm just going to move one light to the left side, press Shift and D to duplicate that light, we're going to move one to the other side and then shift and D one more time and we're going to move one to the back. So basically we've got now three long tall thin lights and if we go to the camera view and look at the render view make sure we've got denoise selected in the viewport um, it starts to look like this. I think those lights are a bit too close so I'm just going to go into top view and just move them all a bit further away because they're just a little bit bright at the minute on the, the bottle. Uh, let's add in a background so shift A going to add in a mesh plane, um, I'm just going to press G to grab, Z to move it on the Z axis. With the mesh selected, press tab to go into edit mode, um, you want edge select to be there. Click on these two edges, basically the edges opposite the camera view. E to extrude, Z to extrude on the Z axis, just pull those up. And then what you can do, you can hold down shift and select these three internal edges of the box. Press Control and B to bevel them. Roll your mouse wheel a few times to give some extra bevels. Tab to come out of that. I've just seen that this, these edges intersect slightly with the light, so I'm just going to press 7 and press G to grab. We're just going to move the background just so those lights are within the boundaries of the background. I think one final touch I'm going to make is just going to change the colour of this background to kind of match the whiskey bottle. So if we click the background, go to the materials, we're going to add a new material. But all I'm going to do with the base colour, I'm going to uh, basically click the eyedropper, click on the whiskey, and we'll pull a colour from that whiskey. If you right click on this background and just change that to shade auto smooth, it gets rid of these lines here. Uh, if I press F12 to render now, we've got this really nice kind of render with these lovely water droplets and they're going to animate really well. If you haven't saved your work, it's a good time to save it. And we can add in a quick camera animation just to finish this off nicely. So uh, what we'll do, I'm going to shift and right click on the bottle to put the 3D cursor on the bottle. In fact, let's move it onto the center of the bottle. So 7 on your number pad for top view. Shift and right click on the top of the bottle, that moves the 3D cursor to there. Shift and A, we're going to add in an empty, let's make it a cube empty. S to scale that right down, much smaller. I'm going to G to grab and move with the Z to move to the center of the bottle. So we've got now a cube empty centered around the bottle. So select your camera, hold down Shift, then click on the empty, then press Control and P and set the parent like that. So now you'll see when I grab the empty, the camera moves with the empty. So now with the empty selected, if I press R to rotate the empty, you'll see the camera view also moves. And if I press S to scale the empty, you'll see the camera zooms in and out. So we'll go back to frame one Set this as the starting frame. No, we won't. We'll go to frame 50 and we'll set this as the starting frame because I want to give 50 frames basically for the condensation and the droplets to appear first. So S to scale the empty, make it a little bit further away. R to rotate on the Z axis. Just rotate away from the front of the label for a bit. And then we press K for a keyframe and we'll set that to location, rotation and scale. We'll move to frame 150. Press S to scale, we'll zoom in a bit. R to rotate, Z to rotate on the Z axis. In fact, let's rotate a little bit. 
on the Y axis as well, S to scale, let's get that a bit bigger. And press K for your keyframe, location, rotation and scale. Let's just move back into different mode so it's a bit quicker. So you'll see now our animation goes from the outside of the bottle, close in on the label at frame 150. So we'll set the end of the animation to frame 150. And basically now when I press spacebar to simulate the animation, you see the condensation start to appear already, so that they basically don't appear straight away. And then at frame 50, the camera starts to move. And this is the animation kind of with the water droplets. Now I'm gonna render this out so you can see it at proper full speed. So to render it, just go to your output properties. I'm gonna go for 25 frames per second. I'm gonna set my location as desktop. The ski. Uh, set your file format to FFmpeg video. Encoding needs to be MPEG4. Output quality perceptually lossless. And that should be good to go. So now just go to render, render animation and wait. And here's the finished animation. As you can see, we've got some lovely water droplets coming over the bottle, actually drip off onto the floor. I think this will give you a really good starting point to come up with some of your own ideas to create a great animation with this effect. As always, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. And remember to like and subscribe if you want to see more content from me in future. Take care.